Awesome. Hello, hello, you guys. Welcome <laughs> to Money Mondays. Uh, your host, Kels and Betsy. Uh, we have an awesome person with us today, Chris Champa. How hello. are you today? I'm Tell great. Tell us a little bit about you. Uh, I'm just a little guy. No, I'm, I'm Chris <laughs> Champa. I'm, I'm from California. Uh, I'm a police lieutenant up in Northern California. Yeah. Uh, and I've been in uh, real estate for probably more than 10 years, but been with RPM uh, since October of 22. Man, like, Chris has been fantastic. Because we're part know. of the same community with uh, Amy Majori, and that has been pretty good. How's the event so far? Oh, I love it. I, I mean, I love Amy and Sean. I love everybody in RPM. They've, they've welcomed me. Uh, it's just a it's a great atmosphere. It's an energetic atmosphere. It fits me. Yeah. I'm a positive guy. I like to chat. I, love it. I like to have a good time, as you know. So yeah. that's what we do here. Have a good time. Just right. That's it. Right. It's I'm curious, like from you have real estate and being a cop. How did that happen? That's a good question. I don't I don't know. Like I literally <laughs> I think it's just because you know you have first. three oh, days, four days off yeah. every week. So you have you have time to for the side hustle. And oh. I'm just that guy that always wants to be interested and, and doing something and, and working. So, uh, and I like working with my hands. So I think I like construction and I don't know. Do you handle it though? Uh, sometimes it gets tiring. I won't, uh, I won't lie, you know, cause you know, I used to joke around that I go from one full-time job to another full-time job. Um, you know, and that's, that's tough, but the reward is, is when you see that transformation of the house or, you know, you actually get to a complete project and that's the best part. Yeah. So you, you mentioned construction and project, your flipper, is that your main focus? Uh, it was, yeah. So until, um, I joined the RPM community, it absolutely was my, my main focus. It was flipping houses and that rehab. And then I learned to raise private money. And so I kind of just stalled flipping because I, I had a whole bunch of investors and I had a whole bunch of private money lenders that had money. And I was like, let's just connect them. And it started to work with the finder's fees. Uh, so now I'm, I'm at the point now where I want to start getting back into either flipping or, you know, buying my long-term holds. Yeah, you guys, hey, finder's fees. Finder's fees. <laughs> yes, finder's fees. Which we'll, we'll get into, we'll get into that as well. Uh, and before we even continue, we just want to share with you guys that we're just get sharing our experience. Uh, we're not giving legal advice or anything like that. So seek an advice from your attorney, talk to your CPA. Uh, we just want to just share that out there. So, Chris, uh, tell us, like, the, per the first deal that you've done with Crab and Money, because Money Mondays is all about raising capital, yeah. investing with purpose. <laughs> tell us about a deal that you've done in terms of how you found a deal, how you structured it with a private yeah. money lender, and um, what was the exit strategy for that? Uh, good question. We've had a couple of them. So, obviously, I've learned, you know, along the way. My first use of private money was, I didn't even really know what it was, yeah. but, you know, I put up... Um, I've got a hard money lender and then I put up the down payment, but then I had somebody else pay for the rehab. And so I, I didn't even know how to structure anything back in the day. So uh, obviously I've gotten wiser. So the last one we did was a, a flip up in um, Auburn area in California. And I used a hard money lender, but then I used a private money lender for everything else. And it was actually two houses. Okay. So let's break that down a little bit. Yeah, it sounds really creative. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> so you use a hard money lender, and you use so the, how much percentage did the hard money lender cover? They covered close to eighty percent. Okay, so that means you needed twenty percent. Yep. And that's what you use the private money lender for. Yep. What about like closing costs and holding costs? Yep. So the closing costs, holding yeah. costs, all from the private lender. Yeah. And then same with the rehab costs. Okay. So all from the private money lender. Perfect. So that you're. This deal and the zero out of pocket. Yes. Nice. So this is what we call OPM. Yes. yes. Using other people's money. OPM. Isn't that fantastic? I, I never thought it would have been possible. Like <laughs> literally, Kalisha, if you would have told me that I'd be doing this, yeah. like even two years ago or three years ago, you know, you always hear other oh people's God. money and how do you leverage that? And I'm like, I, I don't know how to do <laughs> like, there's no way people would give me money. money. Yeah, that's what uh, it feels like you know, when you're and, starting. Yeah. And I did. I felt bad asking for money too. It's like, yeah, but I'm gonna give it back to you. You know, it's like a thing where we just feel so bad. Yeah. So it, and so you know, and I'm a people person, so I love to, you know, service is in my blood. But 
I just feel responsible. There's just a, a different level of responsibility when you have somebody else's money too. So we learned yesterday that you are um, like one on one with Amy you do that coaching. How's that been going for you? Like, what what's your experience with that? I, she's phenomenal, right? I mean, she really is. I she was my first coach um, five six years ago at a different program, and then she catapulted my wife and I's business, and then when I a couple years later, I saw her on social media because we hadn't had contact in a, in a, like at least a year. And I was like, Oh my God, it's Amy. And <laughs> she's back on. I like, I was like, that's Amy. And I showed oh my, my wife and I got really excited. And I was like, I wonder what she's doing. If she's still with fortune you know, builders. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh my God. And so I started texting her, asking her, she's like, no, you know, I'm doing this. Call me tomorrow and we'll chat. And so I called her and we started talking about what she was doing, which was RPM. Oh and she's God. like, no, I got a few calls. Just join these calls for free. Come on. And she literally just started giving me everything again. Like she was my coach again. And then the October event last year, she started to promote that. And I was like, of course, like it's a no brainer. So she's such a giver. She really is. And I that's mean, what I tell people. Like when I first met Amy, like she didn't hard sell before I joined the program. She didn't hard sell at all. Nope. She was giving you all the details. And she's like, hey, girl, if you don't want to join, that's fine. But I just wanted to share right. um, what I've learned, what, I, what I'm doing. And that's what I loved about I was like, you know, you did a hard test. So I'm in. And she's just real. Her yeah. and John are just real. Um, and I think that's, and she's direct. So that's what both my wife and I thoroughly enjoy. Uh, and last year, you know, I always say when I come to these things, like, I'm never going to buy anything. Like, I, they're always going to try. <laughs> and they really don't try and sell you anything. But literally last year, she just looked at me and she says, I got you. You know, because we were just talking about where I wanted to go and the transition I was going through. And she just literally looked at me and says, I got you. And that's just very comforting, right? I mean, and she does. She, You just feel like she has she has you. She has your back. I can hear a voice in my ear saying that. Yes. I, I got you. I got you. Like, I got you. Like, you got this. You know, she just she just instills that confidence yeah. in you. Oh, that's a, that's that's amazing. Um, I know that even Betsy pointed this out the finder's feet. Like, tell us about that. Yeah, that is phenomenal. Like, I seriously, I just get a smile on my face when I just <laughs> think about it. it. You know, because uh, again, it's just Amy, right? Because it's just my standard process is this, and uh, I started saying that over and over, and it just became part of my verbiage, and it's it's work. Yeah. And so you know, now all these private money lenders that I start lending money, they say, oh, what do you, what do you what do you get in exchange? I'm like, oh, my standard process is this. And she always says the 1% or 2%. And so I started talking with her. And she's like, no, you can get more. You know, you're doing more work. And so I said, you know, my standard process is 3 to 5%. Yeah. And so, you know, when you get a $100,000 lender and a $150,000 lender and then a $200,000 lender, um, and then, you know, you start getting more and more confident. And then so when they ask you, what do you want? And I had a $200,000 lender ready to give. And I was like, I, I want $24,000. You know, so it wasn't a it wasn't a percentage. Just this is my fee. He's like, okay, and that's it. Like it's like I, you got to be a firm. Yeah, and I I was shocked. I was like, like really? Like that worked? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're bring because you're bringing the value. You're bringing huge value. A huge value. They don't have to go find the money. So actually, tell tell us a little bit about that process. Which which part? Like um, the value that you're bringing. Uh, all the like, work that you put into it. Right. And so that's a, that's a good question. Um, that's because like literally a lot of, a lot of folks know how to find deals mm -hmm. and they know the process to, to buy it, what it's going to cost to rehab it and what you can sell it for. But they really don't know the process of the financial side on how to bring in a partner and how to structure that piece of the relationship. Um, and so it's, it's just a, it's a lost art, I think, and an art that's never really been taught, right? It's always, Oh, if you have a deal, people will come with money. But usually when those people come with money, they want to take a big portion of your deal too, mm -hmm. you know? And so, and there's always a lot of, a lot of profit to go around. So, yeah. you know, the value is really finding that hole that I can bring that value to you. I can, I can bring you the money. So you all have, all you have to worry about is the project. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because some people, they don't want to even give up anything. No. Like you're not bringing, you, yeah, you're bringing the deal, but. If you don't have the money, you can't even close the deal. No deal, right. no deal if you don't have the money. Yeah, right. like, yeah. what's it, wrong with that? There's, there's no reason to be greedy, right? No, I mean, no. there's there's money. I mean, and that's what I tell these folks, too, is and my finder's fee, my investors always make more than I do. Yeah. 
always. You know, everyone says, oh, but your finder's fee is so big. Yeah, but my investor is going to make $55,000, right? So my finder's fee is just a fraction of the profit. So it's, it's deal by deal. Yeah, it's deal by deal, case by case. Yeah, that's what I want. Then you get super, super creative and you start to Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's right? like, take it or leave it. <laughs> right. And what's funny then is they start calling you back because they realize that, you know, they can really use your skill set, you know? And so they're like, hey, I, you know, we should do more deals together. Okay. But, you know? And then it's like you're constantly working with that same borrower. So their brain deals and you're like, oh, I don't need to be letting new person. That right. Do it. Nothing is wrong with that. But like when you start building that relationship with the investor, it makes it so much easier. Absolutely. Because that's the trust and the rapport, yeah. right? Because they trust you and I've got to trust you as the investor. And mm -hmm. then they've got to trust you. And so once that relationship is there, it's a, yeah, it's a great marriage. What's one big lesson that you've learned so far in raising capital? Um, especially for this it, it's just it's a it's been my mindset shift really it's me personally and i think you know in the early stages you kind of want to you want you're so excited about it and the opportunity that it really almost does sound like you're trying to sell something yeah. and really what i've learned is it's it's a nurturing of a relationship right it's it's, it's dating so you know, I'm just going to give you little tidbits here and there and little bits of information and not too much to overwhelm them. So you can't give them too much detail, but you have to give them enough to they want to hear more and then they want to come back on their time. So I've learned just to be patient and talk with them and let them know what the opportunity is. And then when they're ready, they'll come back to me. And you know, rather than me, rather than me poking the barrel. Yeah. And we were just talking about that. So we, we, we recently did an episode. We recorded our podcast. Yeah. yeah. It's weird how it works because it just takes time. Yeah. You know, because someone will say, oh, I'm real interested and I have this much to invest. Yeah. And then you won't hear from them a couple weeks. And then they'll see you again and they'll be like, oh, I'm really interested. You know, we got we to gotta talk, right? We got to set up a meeting. You're like, hey, anytime. You know, you know, I'm here. You tell me what works for you. You know, we can do a Zoom. I can come to your house. We, you know, we can meet with your wife too. And, um, and it's like, oh, and then it takes a couple of those times. And then finally, hey, when can we meet? That's yeah. And they drive the conversation. Because yeah. yeah. they're, ready, they're ready, right? Yeah. It takes them a bit to process it, I think. Yeah. That, that's so right. The, um, we've experienced challenges in raising capital yeah. as well. Um, some of our challenges are like differentiating a lot of times with the hard money lenders and the private money lenders. Because you'd have conversation with yeah. persons and they're like, yeah, right. we are private money lenders. But it's like the, the qualification process can be a little bit tricky. Application. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, what's, what's one your experience? Yeah, yeah. What, that you have experienced. Uh, sometimes, you know, they will challenge your experience a little bit, right? But um, with the credibility pieces we have and just uh, yeah. the experience that we do have, and the more you dive into it, you get that experience. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just, it's really finding the right match between what the investor's looking for, the primary, the, the private money lenders looking for, because they all have a different level of risk. Yeah. They all have a different interest because some people like flips. Yeah. Some people don't like flips. That's a bad, that so that's a bad word for yeah. them, right? So yeah. you hear yeah. a flip <laughs> and they immediately start thinking risk. like, what happens if it doesn't, doesn't sell? Yeah, right. And how do I figure this out? Yeah. And um, versus they don't look at the numbers, even though the numbers might make sense. Yeah. So, you know, it's just kind of really just educating them still because a lot of them want to be private money lenders, mm -hmm. but they just don't know what that really means. Yeah. And it's like you have to like explain the, the process over and over. Yes. Um, answer like the, the examples, the risk, like worst case scenario, like break it down. Right. So that if you so comfortable, like get them to that point right and as you said like, like his amy shared with us like a private money a core pack that has like a bunch of yes. i find that has been super helpful right and you know one of the other challenges is is not scaring them away but being honest with them like yeah. there is risk like yeah. i this isn't guaranteed yeah, right and so lying. nothing's guaranteed but there's a lot of controls in place. There's a lot, you know, here's how things are mitigated to protect, secure, and insure you, but nothing's guaranteed, right? I mean, you still got to be ready to to adapt. So. But everything there is a whole risk. Um, how are you finding these lenders? The private money lenders? Yeah. It's literally what Amy says to do. When I walk out the door, because I used to tell people, because I'm very proud of what I do. I love what I do. I'm, I've been a police, I'm a police lieutenant now, but I've been a cop for 
16 years, right? Wow. So um, I absolutely love what I do. Um, I, if I could do it longer, I would, <laughs> but physically, mentally, it's just taking a toll on me. So uh, I'm, I'm ready, but I literally just talk to people, right? And that was the biggest change is when I walk out the door now or wherever I'm at, yeah. I'm a real estate investor first. Yeah, and right. I use my four second power pitch yeah. and, you know, and then it goes from there. And then somewhere in the conversation, we'll come back around that, oh yeah, I'm in law enforcement, right? Yeah. And I do this on the side. So I don't hide what I do, um, but I'm a, I'm a real estate investor first now when I'm outside. You got, you got to set the tone. Yeah. Man, so. Chris. Thank you so much. This is amazing. This I know. Has been so great. <laughs> so I amazing. love this. We it's need to do good. this more. Yeah. That's why I used to love talking to you on the phone, oh too. Oh, man, I just you get will excited. I on the phone so much. I know. And long. That's because I love talking to you. Oh, my God. Oh, that's so, that's so sweet. Your journey is like, I know I haven't known you for a long time, but just the entire, I, the fact that I'm a part of the process and seeing everything that you've been doing, it's, it's I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled and I'm still small time. I'm just a little guy. Really? I am. And you know, <laughs> my, I am. I really am. I'm a little guy. At least you get to say that because she's taller. Okay. I, we look pretty she close to the same straight. height right now. Though, <laughs> uh, but you know, my, my goals aren't lofty. My goals are just to, to maintain my lifestyle the way it is, you know, and if things grow, they grow organically and, that's it. Mindset, what, is, what is like one tip or one advice that you would yeah. give to someone who's just starting out? Yeah. One tip or can I give them two? You can do two. Uh, <laughs> wow, look at that value, you guys. Well, the, the first step I would say is you got to find somebody like Amy or the RPM community that, that fits your values, that fits your beliefs, um, because that's a big part of it. Yeah. Uh, and I think the, the second piece is you just have to take action. I think a lot of us talk about things and we read about things and uh, you just got to take that first step. Yeah, that's, that's, the only way you know. that's the only way you learn. Yeah. I still get scared every time I take that first step sometimes on a deal or, you know, when I'm still connecting a new private money lender that's never lent before, yeah. I still get nervous for them. Right. Yes, you know, matter. even though I know it's a great opportunity. Too. Yeah. Cause I still get nervous, but you just got to do it. Right. You just got to move forward. Go for it. Just jump right in. Yeah. Oh, uh, one of our mentors. Mr. Glasgow, he says, do it scared. Yep, or don't oh, do it at all. Don't, uh, don't do it at all. Yep. See? Boom, what is it? Do, do it scared, scared or, don't, or do do it it don't do it at all. Or don't do it at yeah. all. Wow, look at that. <laughs> no, that's pretty good. So if anyone, if anyone wants to find you, Chris, how can they find you? Uh, you can find me at Blue Line Home Solutions. You can find me on Instagram at cchompa6. Uh, and coming soon, I'm going to start my own podcast. Oh, he oh. finally said it. I finally, finally, said, finally it. said it. It came, the words came out of my mouth. So it's going to be Donut Shop Talk uh, with a cop. So it's, I'm the Donut Shop Cop. Uh, so you'll start hearing me a little bit out there more and more, just telling my story. Because uh, I think I have a, a unique story and I want to go out and I want to help other cops that are in the service industry learn that they can invest in real estate. With, you don't have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's what you have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But so thank you, Chris. Thank you for so sharing your story and being on Money Mondays. Yeah, <laughs> Money Mondays. I like it. Guys, except thank it's you. Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. I hope we brought some value to you guys today. I mean, it's been amazing. Guys. It's been like at least for nice. us, it's been full of value. It's always good to hear what other persons are doing and yeah. how they're like growing Sorry. their business, shopping their deals, because we're learning as well, too. Right. Every day. So, you know, but thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we are live here at Amy Majora at Reason Private Money Conference, and I hope you guys saw value in this week's episode. But, yeah. Thank, thank you, you ladies. Person. You're beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. Please like, share, subscribe. Let us know what you think. Yes. Oh, my uh, gosh. Yes. Keep in touch. All right. Bye, guys.